Stine Gordon. I'm a professor in sustainability science at Stockholm University and I'm also the director of Stockholm Resilience Center. There's so many different aspects to this, of course. I think the COP27, we saw some advancements that were really nice to see with the loss and damage fund that has been uh, talked about for such a long time. And finally, there was a break for, uh, breakthrough and establishment of the fund. Um, I think the sort of 1.5 target was a bit uh, challenged, uh, but still uh, kept the momentum and the realization that the world needs to be on track to meet 1.5 target uh, if we are to to have a sort of a successful uh, development going forward. Um, but of course, the ambitions that were raised at COP25 needs to be, there needs to be much higher ambitions if we are to meet the 1.5 target. So some challenges moving forward and some optimism on some of the solutions that we could see. I would say that my area of expertise is primarily around the food system. So, uh, and here we have multiple challenges going on at the same time. So we have an acute uh, hunger crisis globally with uh, people in hung facing hunger and food insecurity rapidly going up, up right now. At the same time, we also see obesity and public health related issues uh, growing globally related to the food system and the food system having major impacts on on our biosphere, uh, driving climate emissions, biodiversity loss and so on. So I would really like to see much more focus on the food system as a core of some of the interconnected challenges that we're facing and that we address them in terms of at least, I would say, four different aspects. We need to shift diets uh, in most places around the world to have more nutritious and healthy food systems. Uh, we need to improve production practices and we need to uh, cat food loss and waste. And then besides that, we also need to increase diversity because we see a very homogeneous food system development today. Everyone, <laughs> just kidding. I'm not, I'm not supposed to say everyone, I guess, but it is food system challenges. Really, this is something that everyone can act on. But in particular, I mean, governments have a big role to play. They, they need to prioritize food system shifts. Uh, they need to find ways to, for uh, regulations also that helps us to shift diets and production practices. They also need to stimulate uh, uh, innovations and provide funding to, for a uh, new type of um, uh, food system changes to, to be able to happen. Um, so governments are really important. Uh, the industry is really important. This is where we also see lots of exciting uh, changes happening and that companies are uh, taking up some of the innovation challenges uh, that we need to see happen. So, so industry has a big role to play. And then financial uh, institutions uh, to shift funding so that they can stimulate this transition that is needed. Um, but as I said also, every one of us can also act as individuals in this system, but it's not our own responsibilities to do so. Yeah, no, I, I remain hopeful. I remain worried, very worried about what we're seeing, but also hopeful. And I think if I think personally about the type of, of food that we can eat in the future, I think it's both uh, can be really tasty, very diverse, much more inspired by uh, the diversity of, of uh, crops and vegetables, uh, uh, animals that live in this world. Um, and that we, I'm sure we can find solution where we can sort of uh, build on this uh, diversity. And that is also uh, can be tasty and attractive. So I, I remain uh, hopeful.